This week on Sport Fishing, we're down in Dana Point, California, where we'll be fishing out of Dana Wharf Sport Fishing. And we're gonna be aboard the Clemente, the boat that's right behind me. So it's early morning, we're gonna take off soon, stop at the bait receiver, get some bait, and then head north and fish along the coast. And the goal is to look for calico bass, barracuda, and maybe even yellowtail or two. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. That's a nice vermilion right there. Yeah, this is what fish is like. I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. We got a calico bass going here, Trevor. There it comes. There he is, color. A little calico right here. A couple years ago, that would have been legal. Now it's a little short. Thanks. Good one, he's worth the measure. Yep. There you go, maybe that's the one that's biting on yours. Maybe, Thank you. Maybe. Right. If you want to start working to your left, we'll get away from the second line. It's a big black seat. Is it a black? Oh, it's a big white. It's a big white. Get a go. Get a go. All right, he's spinning out. It's a good, it's a white tea bath. You're ready. Go. Yeah. Nice legal white sea bass. Haven't seen a legal white sea bass in a long time. There's color. Oh, nice calico. Nice calico. There we go. Nice calico bass. Fishing aboard the Clemente today. And uh, it's just fishing whole sardine. And got that fish. All right, let's go ahead and release it. Nice calico. Foul hooks. That's how you catch a fish without it. <laughs> Got him swimming by. That's right. What's your name? Seth. Seth? Number six. What kind of bait were you fishing, Seth? It's a uh, sardine. Sardine? Yeah. Keeper calico on the sardine, what number? Six. Six? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Throw this guy in the bag. A little smaller than your last one, right? Yeah. But uh, still a keeper. Number 11. Number 11? Yeah. All right. A nice quality model.
this. Nice trash. Very nice on this guy. This guy was pretty close. Yeah, short. Corner and short. Alright, we got a nice hey. sand bass on the sardine. What's your name? Albert. Albert? Albert just got a Fish nice deep. Fish sand deep. bass. Oh, on the bottom. What number are you, Albert? 26. 26. Good work. Thank you. A little small lately, but still having a blast on Dan's trip. So this one actually looks like it's a male. Um, the biggest sheep head in the group will turn male. Um, only in California. <laughs> My name is Mike Schott. I'm the director of the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium. Another really interesting animal I find in local kelp forests is the sheephead. All sheepheads start out when they first sexually mature as females. Uh, they stay in groups that re they refer to as harems that have one male sheephead that's in charge of that particular harem and does all the reproducing with those females. If that one big male that looks totally different than the females, by the way, um, he's got a white chin like they do. He's got a big, lumpy head, black head, and then a red bar in the middle and a black tail, and much larger than the females. If that male is taken out of that harem, one of the females in the harem becomes dominant, takes over, and turns into a functional male and is in charge of that harem. That's a tip. <laughs> That's work. Oh, Once you get them you. out, you're real, real, real. Quarter inch too short, huh? <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. What do you think he's going to do it? <laughs> nice work. <laughs> Keeper Bass, what number are you, man? Uh, nice work. To a dropper loop rig, Skipper made a little move and I hooked something on the bottom. I don't know what I got. Let's see if he's still there. It is a tiny calico. This is about as small as calico as you can catch. A little tiny fish. All right, well, I've caught some bigger ones today, so that's a little one for the day. Let's take a little break from the action board the Clementi and go to the tackle box. Give you a good look at the gear we're using today. Tackle box. We're in Norwalk, California at Turner's Outdoorsman, and standing next to me is Kyle, the fishing manager. Hey, Kyle, thanks for having us out Thank today. Thank you, Dan. So, on today's episode, Kyle, we're fishing um, right along the coast. We left out of Dana Point and we're up by Newport Beach now, picking away at the calico bass. We know there's white sea bass, halibut in the area, but the calicos are biting really good on everything from anchovies, sardines, bucktails, a cut squid, and I think there's an opportunity for some surface fishing too on the iron and stuff. Can you suggest a rod and reel for this type of fishing? Yeah, absolutely. So we have our new uh, Californian Trihelix rod made by Phoenix for us. Uh, this is a 15 to 30 pound rod, and we have it paired up with Dio's new Saltigo single speed reel. Um, great for fishing the live bait, and works perfect for the smaller surface irons. Cool. And those calicos, when they're right up on the surface, something like this, this particular lure is made by Taddy. There's lots of different brands out there, and you guys have a wide selection of jigs here that people can come find out and learn about. Correct. And this jig, when you see a jig that has a belly on one side and flat on the other, that tells you it's designed to fish really slow on the surface. But you can come in, see Kyle, they'll be glad to give you information on different jigs and different techniques to use. Absolutely. Now, as far as the little bit deeper fish, we're catching them today on the bucktails and just using a strip of squid or whole squid on there, and the calicos really seem to be active on them. And the other thing we're seeing in today's episode, right along the kelp, a lot of active calicos. You could fly line a bait like an outfit like you talked about. Again, you can go with 
different size hooks. And here at the store, they've got all the different brands of hooks so you can come and check out the different brands. The Mustads for the sardines, I like these. For the calicos, the thinner wire black nickel hooks, what do you think about them? I like a thinner wire hook for the calicos as well. Um, smaller presentation on the water, get your bait to swim a little bit better. And when you go fishing, you never know if you're going to have sardines or anchovies. This particular size here, 3.0, is good for the sardines. What do you recommend for the anchovies? Something in a number one, number two, depending on what the bait size is. But like you said, you got to come out with a whole variety of hooks. All right. And as far as line tests that they should be bringing in? Anywhere from 12, 15, sometimes even up to 20, depending on what you're throwing. Yeah, and if there's white sea bass and yellow, I'd have one 30 pound too. Exactly. You know, and it's been a different year this year. Traditionally, we would say on a three quarter day trip, nothing heavier than 20, 25. Mm -hmm. This year, there's been so many big fish so close to shore. Even half day boats, guys are taking 30 and 40 pounds. Absolutely, you gotta walk out with that heavy stuff too. Yeah, you never know. So for more information about fishing tackle and selection, you can come over to Turners Outdoorsman. Kyle, the guys here, will be glad to show you all the different gear. Well, thanks for helping us out today. Thanks, Dan. Let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Don't hold up so Not all the way up. There you go. Oh, this is heavy. <laughs> so this is the California scorpion fish. They have venom and all these spines, even all the ones on their face, a couple down here. And basically it's a, it's a hollow needle that they have on their spines and it has bacteria in there. And once that bacteria gets in your skin, it gets really itchy and in, inflamed and stuff like that. So you wanna stay away from these guys. Sometimes if you're allergic, it won't be that good. It's like a bee sting, but times 10. Nice little female sheephead. This girl's gonna be a little bit too small, so we're gonna go ahead and toss her back. Good job, what's your name? Erin. Erin? Good job. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Alright, good. Nice calico on a circle hook. Pitches right in the corner of the mouth. Good job. Yep. Thank you. This is a Johnny Bass. It's actually a type of rockfish. The reason we call it a Johnny Bass is because it does kind of look like a bass, but it's actually in the rockfish family. There's no size limit, but this guy's just a little kid, so we'll throw him back. Yeah. Here's a nice calico bass. Nice calico bass. Keeper for sure. Yeah, nice much. There you go. So we're still fishing Newport area. And fly lining live sardines. We've been waiting for the current to change. That's what the, kept, the skipper kept telling us. Need conditions to change a little bit. We had slack current there, slack tide for a while. It's finally switching over and the fish are starting to bite right on the surface. Nice calico. All right, we're gonna take a little break from the action and go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of these delicious fish we're catching today. This week in the galley, I have something totally different for you. I'm gonna make a fish sandwich out of halibut. So the way you start off with that is really simple, a beautiful piece of halibut that we just caught. And I'm gonna go ahead and get some egg. So I'm beating up the egg here. I'm just gonna use that to dip the halibut in for a second. Now all I'm gonna do now is grab my little piece of halibut and dip it right into the, the egg. That way the fish batter will stick on there. And we're gonna use fish batter mix, but we're not gonna deep fry it. All we wanna do is coat it. So we have some egg on there. We're gonna dip it right into the fish batter mix. Go ahead and put some olive oil in here. Again, we don't wanna deep fry it. And to make it taste even better, you just add some butter. And the reason you add the olive oil with the butter, if you put just straight butter in there, the pan's gonna get too hot and it's gonna burn it. But with the olive oil, it'll keep it cool enough that it won't burn it. So we'll let that butter melt in there nice. So I have the fish all done here. And I like to add a little paprika to it. So I'm just gonna add a little dab of it there. Take the fish over to my pan. 
and drop it in. And what this fish batter mix is gonna do, it's just gonna give us a nice little crust on the outside. It's not gonna deep fry it like I said. We didn't add water or any other liquid to it. Just nice and dry, so we're just gonna get a nice little crisp to it. And we'll let this cook up for a while now. And get my bread. I have a knife here. Just gonna cut it right in the middle. So now I'm gonna do is just start off with the bowl here with some mayonnaise. Some relish, just regular hot dog relish. Some Dijon, just a little dab of it. A little bit more relish. And mix it all in together. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take a pinch of salt and some more paprika. And that's it. And just mix it all together. And this is what we're gonna use to coat the bread to make the sandwich. Now to help the fish cook even faster, what I like to do is put a little lid on it and it just kind of steams it. It's kind of replacing sticking it in the oven, but you could do that too, but this is a little bit faster. It's a quick heat with that flame right below it. It's ready to go. Okay, toast is done. Okay, so all I want to do right now is build my sandwich. So I'm gonna move the fish fillet for a second. Go ahead and grab some of that sauce that we just made up. Coat it on the bottom. And just take a little bite. Mmm. That halibut came out really good. Using the fish batter mix, not to deep fry it, but just to coat it, get a little crunchiness, adds to the flavor, it's really good. And this is why I like to serve it for my friends, just a little bit of chips some pickles and you're good to go. This is a halibut dish, really simple to do. You should be able to do it at home. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. There we go. Sarah got another one. Sarah is one of our most regular Dana Point anglers. Every time we're down here, it doesn't matter what boat we're on, she joins us. Nice fish. Nice calico bass. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Well, that's a fat one too. Nice. Yeah. Somebody's How about short? Oh yeah, that's good enough. What's your name? Um, Ethan. Ethan. Oh, looks like you were fishing the squid here. Were you down on the bottom? I'm um, pretty sure I was down at the bottom. Nice. Here we go. I just switched over to a bucktail. The fish seemed to stay away from the surface baits and they're biting squid on the bottom. So I went to a bucktail with some squid on it. And I got a bass. I don't know if I'm gonna get him out of this kelp. Let's see if I can force him out of here. Don't have any real heavy line on here. So I'm gonna try backing it off. See if he finds his way out. There he goes. Head shake. There we go. Got him loose. Oh, now he's in another stringer. There he goes. There he comes, right here. Nice bass right here on the surface. Sand bass. Nice sand bass. And you can see what I caught it on here. It's a B-52 bucktail. And just kind of swallowed it right there. B-52 bucktail with a piece of squid on there. Nice, big, beautiful sand bass. That's what we're trying to catch here. Sand bass, calicos, and we even got that really nice white sea bass. Well, we're gonna take a little break from the action here aboard the Clemente, and when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. <laughs> Thank you.
For this week's tip of the week, I want to talk to you a little bit about the fish we caught today. It was pretty much a calico bass bite, but we did have a couple of exotics in there, like that big white sea bass. But those calico bass, it's typical calico bass where the fish change as the conditions change. When there's no current, you got to go down deep. When you have lots of current, you can fish the surface, you know, fly lining those sardines, live sardines with a good quality hook. And then when we had light current to slack current, then you had to fish those anchovies. And you had to work that anchovy really hard with light line. And that's what we did. The anglers, they caught lots of fish today. They paid attention. They saw what the fish wanted. They switched to those conditions and they caught fish. That's this week's tip. When you get in a bite like this, and I wouldn't call it a touchy bite, it was a good bite. But as the day went on and the conditions changed, you had to switch your tactics. You do that and you're gonna catch fish. Now, a lot of you have been sending me emails asking, how do I get on one of your trips? And it's really simple. All you do is go to our website, you see a list there of all our fishing trips, and every one of those trips we film for TV, one of these episodes. So just sign up there, and you can be fishing on a boat with me and be in one of the shows. It's really simple to do. Well, I want to thank the crew of the Clemente. Our skipper, Chad, did a great job. All the deckhands, they really helped us out a lot, and everybody had a lot of fun. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.